Waifs and Strays, recorded at the studio Witness, produced by Lucy, directed by Louise McNulty, edited by James Swift. Down at the Lazy Street Studio, where no one is paying attention, Lady P the Pigeon on Patrol comes to life, and the Lazy Street Collective gather round and gossip. Some call her Lady P, some call her Pigeon, and some call her... Hey, oh, Pigeon! You are a much too familiar, Walter. I've been out there looking for us a place, my sweetness, but the old town's not what it was. Far too many disappearing roosting places. Have I said I'm ready for cohabitation? I had me eye on a penthouse suite. I'm not ready to move from here, Walter. This is my home and my career, as you well know. I mind the entrances and the exits. I know you are irreplaceable, my little dove. I'm not a dove. I'm pure P-I-G-E-O-N, pigeon, from a long, proud line of pigeons. My great-great-grandfather was a carrier pigeon in World War I. We pigeons take our responsibilities very seriously. I know you do, Pidgey Poo. Don't call me that. Mm. Besides, that's your game. And the game is about to start. A car has just pulled up and someone has got out and closed the door. And here are my first targets. Albert the Handyman and Catherine. Walter, no. She's a manager. Oh, you Spoil sports. <laughs> Albert, why is it so cold in here? Is the heat and turned up? Oh no, not exactly. Can you turn it up please? We've got the mayor and the councillors coming in 20 minutes. I can't turn it up. Why not? I can't turn it up because it's not working. Not working, not working. What do you mean it's not working? No, don't panic, lass. <laughs> no, you see, it needs a self-reciprocating nerdling sprocket. And I'm still waiting for the part. I thought you got one of those and fitted it last week. Uh, no. That was the hypergasket fulminator valve. A different fault altogether. Same result, though. <clears throat> don't work. Well, it's freezing. What am I going to do? Nah, nah, don't worry, don't worry. I've had the lad lay out some of the emergency blankets to keep you all warm. Blankets? Blankets? I can't offer the mayor and councillor blankets, for heaven's sake. What am I going to do? Well, there's the fan eater. A fan eater? I didn't know we had a fan eater. Albert, you've saved the day. Where is it? Can you get it, please? And hurry. Well, I could. Except it's at the back of the storeroom behind everything else. Doesn't matter. Look, show me where it is. I can work my way in there. I'm flexible enough. I used to be a contortionist. Aye, you probably could. But I wouldn't bother, though. Why not? It don't work. <laughs> it's broken. It needs a new temperature regulating multi-stop toggle switch, you see. <laughs> 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 I really must speak to you, my turtle dove, about the... Not now, Walter. I am having a headache. And besides, I have to rearrange my plumage for the visit of the mayor. But, but that's what I want to... Besides, here is my ten o'clock. Your what? I mean, here comes my next caller. You know today is my report day for my little pigeon security squad. Here comes Agent Bombay now. Perhaps you know him. Oh, I know him all right. Billy the Skid, I call him. He models himself on Rambo in Defecator 3. I don't know why you bother with him. He's a maverick and a show-off. No respect for the art of the targeted poo. How do, Lady P? All right, Pops. How are you diddling? Hit any good ones lately? I had seven so far today. Seven already? Oh la la, you are like the Red Baron of Weakness. And so handsome, isn't he, Walter? Uh, seven. Seven one-pointers. General public all at the same bus stop, I'll bet. No, the Vikings game? The Chemics at Norton Park, you mean. I think you'll find Grandad. It's called the Holton Stadium. Oh, keep up, Walter. Listen, it's not just about flying and hitting. No, that's a big part of it. But it's the velocity. 
your own trajectory and the trajectory of one you leave behind. In the noble arts of aerial target defecation, wind speed is everything. You got seven, but me, I'd have picked up the referee, got him good and proper, and left him a unanimous roar of applause. It's quality, not quantity, that counts. A good hit isn't just another notch on your toy. Do you want to knock that off? Listen, Sonny, the mayor is coming here today. If you hit him with what you youngsters like to call a good one, how many points will you get? One. <laughs> so you would count the mayor as one point, the same as anyone else. Oh, the folly of youth. You may hit the mayor, but you're missing the point. And that's it. There's a point system. There has to be. Otherwise, it's pointless. Do you see? Eh, uh, no. Look, the mayor is a public dignitary. The press will be here. He's worth at least ten points. His assistant will be with him, seven or eight points, depending. Chauffeur, nice uniform, six points, and so forth. Where's the skill in just letting fly at a rugby match on the crowd? By the way, what was the score? I don't know. I didn't look. Didn't look? Didn't look! You've got a lot to learn, laddie. Here, see these two coming up. Who are they? Don't know. Rule number one. Know your target. How many points do you reckon they were? Walter, I have told you, I don't like the pooing game on my doorstep. But who are they? She is Beryl, and the lad, who I like to call the lad, she's a cleaner. Well, she's cleaner than him anyway, but she pecks him like a hen. I know how he feels. Don't make her angry. She always tells the lad to get rid of us all. Good for us that he is good at nothing. I'm not afraid. You know, my great-great-grandfather was a carrier pigeon at Waterloo. I'd never mention it. I'll get her. Her time will come. Coo. <laughs> Oh, here we go. The morning after the night before. What a mess. What did they get up to in here? Okay, it was all my stuff. Bleach. Check. Jake Locks. Check. Hammer and chisel. Check. But where's the brush for you, Ben? But where's that soft loo roll gone? Hey, run up to the public loo and roll some off and bring it back, will you? Oh, not again, Bell. That last night nearly got caught. Just go and be quick. Everyone's going to be here soon. But they'll see me. It's daylight. People will be watching. I can't. <coughs> Beryl? Oh, there you are. Have you got the place clean? The mayor will be here soon. The mayor? Nobody told me. How am I supposed to get the place ready if no one tells me what's going on? Look at the front of the building. It's covered in pigeon droppings. We'll have to get that cleaned up. I don't know. No rest for the wicked. Never mind the toilet bowl. Get the ladder. I can't climb ladders. I don't like heights. Oh, don't be daft. Get up the ladder and get clear of that pigeon poop. I hate ladders. I can't stand heights. Why should I have to do all the work? Hey, Beryl, you shouldn't be telling the lad to get up a ladder. That's my job. Hey, lad, get up that ladder. He's involved in a cleaning project. That makes me in charge. <laughs> and that's my ladder. And that puts me in charge. Get up there. Stop. Now get up there. Stop. Come down. No, stop. Now come down. I don't know what to do. Get up the ladder. And what's that in his hand? A cleaning rag. I rest my case. Yeah, I'm going to rest my backside. It's time for my break. Yeah, and I'm going to contact my supervisor. Help! Don't leave me! Ooh. What's going on? Leave it to me, sonny boy Jim. Bell's got a problem with a ladder or something. Well, I'm not surprised. I know I should buy the tights. Right, 
So I left a ladder here not two minutes ago. Oh, Kath, Kath, have you moved me ladder? I haven't. <laughs> well, someone's moved it. Oh, honestly, you turn your back for two ticks and someone swipes your ladder. Well, I hope you're not saying I took it. What would I want with an extendable tool that you've had your hands on? I never said you took it. All I'm saying is that there were a ladder here not two minutes ago. I turned me back and it's done a lot of looking. Done a what? Well, that doesn't matter. The point is, I need that ladder. Why? <laughs> because of Bob. It's Robert. Uh, sorry, Bob. I meant Robert. Bob? What does he need it for? Robert! Well, he needs the ladder, doesn't he? Why does he need the ladder? Because he's going to fall from the ledge otherwise. He's going to do what? Uh, Bob, what are you doing up there? What if he fall? Well, that's why I need the ladder. But anyway, it's my ladder. Excuse me, but that ladder is the property of the Lacey Street Studio. <laughs> now, look here. If anyone's going to be left dangling because some daft so-and-so's moved the ladder, then at least that person should be me. At least we agree on something. Uh, Stop, Stop shouting, shouting Bob. Bob. Anyhow, I think I know who's moved it. Who? It'll be Beryl. You know what she's like for tidying and putting things away? Well, where is she? Oh, she's on the phone to a supervisor. Again. Well, where she put the ladder? How do I know? Uh, Shut up! Well, there's nothing else for it. We'll have to get the fire brigade. If he falls and makes a mess on the floor, do you have any idea how much paperwork we'll have to fill in? I'll be on the health and safety awareness course for a solid month. Well, you'll have to think of something sharpish. Uh, why'd you say that? Uh, because not only is young Bob... It's Robert! Uh, sorry, Bob. Uh, not only is he going to make a mess on your lovely floor, but unless I'm mistaken, the mayor himself is due to arrive at any moment. Oh, my God, the mayor! What am I going to do? Right, Bob, whatever you do, make sure you don't fall until after the mayor's been. Do you hear me? Uh... Is that a hearse that's pulling up outside? Oh, honestly, Walter, I think you need the new glasses. That is no hearse. That is a limousine of the Lord Mayor of Witness. Is it now? And you know what that means, mon chéri? I do, my beautiful French flower. Didn't we say ten points? It is indeed. Oh, I love it when you talk the pigeon French. <laughs> Give it to him, both of you. I'll never forgive him for the pigeon calling at the town hall. Do you have him in your sights, Walter? I'm just getting him in my crossbows and... Quick, Walter, before he disappears. And it's bombs away. No, it's Bond Bay away. Uh, welcome uh, to the Lacey Street studio, your worship bonus. Uh, I'll get you the cloth. Episode, you have been listening to Richard Bradshaw as Walter, Shelley Jones as Lady B, Jane Bennett as Captain, Jed Jarris as Albert, Dylan and Monticelli as Bombay, Galatmara as Beryl. The lad and the narration was done by Phil Fernley, and the sound effects brought to you by the cast. <laughs> <laughs>